and we got a big brand SEC game to hit on in Austin, where the Texas Longhorns welcome in the Florida Gators on ABC at noon Eastern. Texas, a 21 and a half point home favorite at BetUS. The Florida money line is plus 950. Just bananas. Total of 48 on this. That's an implied score around 35 to 13. Kyle, uh, Florida looked like they lost DJ Lagway for the season last week when he got carted off the field. And now Napier comes out yesterday and said it's not as severe as they thought uh, and that they're not even ruling him out for this weekend. Like Lagway being out is why this line is where it is. Otherwise, we're we're probably looking at Texas by, what, 17 or so? What do you think? I think I think 17, the max. Um, it was such a difference there without him in the game. And that, that was a fun game until he got injured. Um, sucks to see him get hurt. He was definitely playing well. Uh, Florida, not even close to the same without him. Those soft tissue injuries are tough to predict. I don't want to bet that he's going to come back in this game. Yeah. I mean, I think that's coach speak more than anything else. Um, Texas is first in the nation in yards per play allowed. It's hard to see a path for Florida scoring many points without lagway in this game. Uh, the team total set very low. I don't want to bet it just because there's some unknown. Texas offensively is disappointed the last couple games. I want to see how the offense looks in this one. Florida's defense is not tremendous, but they've been feisty, decent here. Texas need to get the passing game going. We'll see if they can in this one. Um, this game had the potential to be really fun, but the injuries and it being in this spot, a 21 in the hook with a total of 48, just not a game that I have much of a lean on. When there's this many games on the board, I have to pass on a game like this that has so many unknown variables. Yeah, I mean, that that does... It, my full season number has got Texas by 21.7. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's right on the number. Uh, look, the only two times that these two teams have, have ever played was in 1939 and 1940, which is not exactly relevant these days. Texas has not covered their two most recent games as a home favorite, but they were... Six and one against the spread prior to that. Florida just three and one, or sorry, not just three and one. They are three and one against the spread in their last four as a road dog. Um, it, my last four weeks number has Texas minus 12. Texas coming off of a bye. They've got a game at Arkansas next week. Florida coming off the loss to Georgia. They got LSU in the swamp next week. If Lagway doesn't play even at this number, I'd still probably lean Texas because Sark is not exactly known for taking his foot off the pedal. Uh, and I doubt that the Longhorns keep giving the Gators the ball the way Carson Beck did last week. Parker, this is a that's a it's a fun helmet battle, but there's a reason this spread is so lopsided, right? What what are you expecting in Austin? Yeah, I put this one on the sheet because I wanted to go Florida here. I thought we were going to get some better lagway news, but yeah, like Kyle said, it's it's probably just coach speak. I can't trust uh, I can't trust Napier with that and and kind of bet on that. I will say the reason I had circled Florida here is that I do think, and this is probably the biggest compliment I can pay to them with their schedule this season. They've become annoying. They 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 are like annoying to play against. Um, and yes. with this schedule, that's about all you can hope for here. Um, you know, looking at. Uh, they're 29th in, in net EPA per play, 29th on offense, 34th on defense. Obviously, Texas is top 10 in both, 7th on offense, 3rd in defense, and has the edge in basically every conceivable um, notion that that you could you could think about here. Uh, I am just interested in, in, in kind of two things. If Lagway's there, I mean, he's looked legitimately uh, like a shot in the arm for this offense. Looks like the, the players want to play, and there's the motivation angle as well uh, for, for him being in there. They do run quite a bit less than uh, than Texas's defense has faced. Teams are rushing 5.2 percentage points more against Texas than uh, than on average. So if if Lagway was in there, we'd be talking about the passing volume and how that might stretch Texas's defense in a way that they haven't really. Um, Florida's defense also been bad on early downs, but has bowed up certainly in those third and fourth down situations relatively. And so again, you could see a path for them to be annoying. They run about 10 fewer plays a game than Texas does on average. Could Florida slow this down at all on defense? And and kind of keep this close. I'm really tempted to go Florida here, but without Lagway, um, I, I feel I'll say this to, to be clear to our viewers with Lagway. I feel like this is mispriced and I think this is an obvious Florida play. The uncertainty is what the premium is on the line here. So if you get some inside info on Lagway, if you've got some sentiment there, I think Florida is the way to go. I'm going to hold off on pulling the trigger uh, just without the certainty there. I do agree with you, Gary. I think Texas could just absolutely pile on and this Florida offense will have little recourse. Yeah, they Texas is the kind of team that needs to get Quinn Ewers back right because he, he hadn't played well as of late. Uh, so I this might be the kind of game where they just they they pile it on. Like you said, 
they might do that. Uh, Jack jumped in and said that Gary's got the 80 years ago angle. <laughs> and to be fair, Florida has not scored a single point uh, against Texas. They, uh, they, they got shut out both of those games. So, you know, the first points that they score here, if they score, will be the first points they have ever put on the Longhorns. No official play on this one. If Lagway does play, we'd lean Florida. If he doesn't, we'd lean Texas. So no official plays. 